Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Radical Geek live stream. I see we have some people in the chat. Sky, who was first and way early. And Cool Kid Keto. Of course, Sunday, which means the dog's got to go out. Uh, Jen is here. And, oh, hey, Sharon. Good to see you. And Renee, heading to Walmart. So, Sky's got a bang and a cigar. So, what kind of cigar? Which one? So let's see. I know it's going to be light this week because everybody's on the cruise and here we are not on the cruise, but it'll still be good. Um, so. Oh, my dog has realized I'm downstairs in the studio and he is not. It wouldn't be the live stream without my howling little Pomeranian upstairs, right? So at any rate, what we've got tonight is I'm going to make a cortado. And a cortado is uh, espresso and milk. Now, I'm using heavy cream because we're keto, and uh, it's actually a 50-50 dilution of milk to coffee. You should know that uh, it's not all heavy cream. In order to make it more milk-like, uh, uh, you do 50-50%. I know, it's 50-50-50-50. Heavy cream and water, and that uh, gives it the right consistency of milk. See, so you can sort of see not real well, of course, but uh, yeah, I think my camera's crooked, but we'll survive. So that's going to be for uh, the milk portion, and it's a double shot of espresso. We've done espressos before, and hi, Reichwin, good to see you here. Um, leftover chicken and steak sounds fantastic. Oh, I love the uh, I love the flatheads. Those are nice, but uh, although I really enjoy the Basin, even though it's one of their lower end cigars, it's just really does a great. Uh, I really enjoy it a lot. So, but uh, yeah, so the Cortado is a fifty fifty espresso and uh, warm milk, not foamy, just just steamed milk. The other thing that I'm making, and I will tell you that this is an untested recipe. I love doing them untested here because I think even if it goes awry, at least uh, we've tried it out. But I've been playing with the base for a while and then today I have all of the ingredients to actually make it. So this is a Reuben inspired chaffle and we'll be putting that together. I don't, even, I don't anticipate any issues with it because we've made lots of chaffles before and I've added ingredients to chaffles and uh, really rarely have I had like massive problems with them. Sometimes, you know, eh, usually the problem is if, the, if I have uh, too much cheese and not enough of anything else. And today we'll have lots of everything else. Oh, hey, Lisa. Good to see you. Oh. Uh, just sitting down to dinner. What are you guys having? Your food is always so amazing. Oh, Mayfield Ranch is here. Guys, Mayfield Ranch has their own YouTube where they're showing their homestead. It's so cool. If you are into that kind of thing, you should totally check it out. Um, their, their setup is amazing. Oh, and Stwong is here. Oh, the parents just left. Oh, so... I don't know, you guys want to start with coffees first or chaffles first? You let me know. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and start putting together the espresso. Nothing new to the espresso tonight. It's my standard Bustello. So, yeah, I haven't seen it. It is the, uh, the Supreme, which I like even better than the regular Bustello. It's kind of got like a nice little boost to it. So... And I will just put my espresso in. I'm not being like over careful with it or weighing. I'm just uh, putting it into my container here, giving a little level off. That is pretty much all there is to that. And then of course, this time, I put the tamper where it belongs, in the little tamper holder on the espresso machine. And so when you first put your espresso in, it's all the way up to the top. 
as you can see, and it's a little loose. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm starting with the coffee. I've been dying for the coffee all night. I don't know. But, so what you do is you take it, and I know we've done this before, but I figure if we're on the live stream and maybe someone new who's quiet is watching and hasn't seen it before, but you just give it a good mash down. Make sure that you get all of the little bits off the edges. Make sure it's all good and smooth. And then you can see it's gone down a good, you know, a quarter inch down into there. Uh, the tamping is super important to your espresso because it's what's going to prevent the channeling from the high pressure and the multiple bars. In look, I almost put I almost put that tamper off to the side, which is what made me lose it last time. Where it belongs, when places have a when things have a place they belong, you should put them there, which I rarely do. But, uh, and if you're not familiar with what channeling is, channeling is what uh, happens when uh, the water, instead of permeating the grounds, uh, pushes through, like, and makes like a little tunnel, a channel, into the coffee grounds. And the reason that's bad is because it under extracts the coffee and gives it that really sour, bitter taste. So you don't want that. And that... Well, under uh, you really it's and it's even like a, it's much worse if you don't pack down your espresso it gets really tart if you've ever had something it tastes almost like it's going bad and that's why you don't want that to happen oh lisa agrees with me that the bustello is awesome and they're having lamb shoulder chops with two sunny side up eggs and cocktail shrimp oh that sounds fantastic so let's see Oh, and uh, Sky is asking where Mayfield Ranch is located. Uh, and Lisa says they're in Indiana. Which, uh, I don't... Uh, oh, uh, Shauna's not here today, by the way, so because she's also going to the cruise. Uh, but if you want to reach out to me or to Attila on uh facebook and his name is spelled the same way it is on here and he'll type something into the chat so you can have his name you can send him your link and then he's one of our moderators and can uh, post the link in the chat if the if you want if you don't want that's okay too so oh and sky says that's exactly why he does not like coffee it's always bitter and he can never find a way to smooth it out with lots of without lots of sugar and cream a lot of that is going to be the brew method so we can uh troubleshoot if you want to but honestly you might just be happy with uh not having coffee coffee is a uh, not for every person uh, and that's okay because i'll make up the difference My water goblet. Dripping onto my tablecloth here. So we're going to have a moment. Chat up a little bit here while we brew the espresso because you know it does funky things to the sound. But, oh, and by the way, I'm using my full-size coffee cup even though you normally wouldn't need to do that. It's just a... It's, it's got the good width and it's the double wall thicks for something like, for a drink like a Cortado, you do want that double thick walls or double insulated, etc. So, all right, my double shot espresso coming right now. So there you go. That was the, the uh, espresso, and it's going to finish just a little bit of dripping. You can see it got a big crema and all of the froth coming here. So I'll give it a minute to settle, and then we'll move forward with uh, steaming of the milk. Um, I'll nerd it up here. Sorry for the silence on that while it brews, but it just 
evidently does such funky things with the sound that I, I've decided it's better for us to watch the coffee brew. It only takes like 30 seconds and that's what we're here for, coffee. So let's see. Oh, and Cool Kid Keto says they have been adulting by drinking black coffee. You know, it took me a long time. And even now, I enjoy times when it's not... Uh, um, not black, like tonight, where I'm having the cream in there, which, by the way, there we go, move that out of the way for a second, so you can see now where it started out all, uh, clear, and then it separated, and now I've got the crema on top, which is completely irrelevant, we've talked about that too in the past, about the crema is not, like, really an important part of the espresso, so if when you brew, you don't have one, other than making sure you don't have to troubleshoot for like a sour or bitter on your extraction, you don't have to worry about whether it's got a nice head of crema or not. The crema is actually just the pressure building up and uh, working off of the oils from the grounds. So no worries if it's not there. So let me get this back to heat up for the steaming. It'll be uh, just a minute there for that to go. I almost took like a big swig of it. So, let's see. And just in case you're wondering, so I'm going to go ahead and pour my cream into my little steamer pitcher. And it is something to mention with the cortado, it's not a, uh, we're not foaming the milk. It's just, uh, it's just to warm it up a little bit so your drink doesn't get cold. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, and Lisa says she has not gone to plain black coffee. And Sky says they've always wanted to like coffee but just never got there. But they do like the mocha keto chow, so maybe there's hope. Irony, I love coffee. I hate the mocha keto chow. The mocha and the tomato basil are the only two flavors that I don't absolutely love. Um, I don't know what it is, but the, the mocha does not do it for me. Oh, and Cool Kid, oh, ooh, Cool Kid is asking if anyone's staying up to check out the moon tonight. I don't know. I have to look up when it's, uh, making its appearance in Ohio. I'd like to. But I also am cognizant of the fact that I've got, like, some stupid early meetings. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jen says that they, uh, that she meal prepped up a storm today. Uh, tell us what you made because I saw your post and now I already can't remember everything, but it looked very impressive. And now there's going to be noise again because we're going to steam this milk. You can see right into my pitcher. And it always takes just a second. I mean, so the steam is not as bad. So that's probably worse than the actual brewing of the espresso, but at least it was quick, right? I'm sorry about the sound though, but one must do what one must do. Now, so we've got it, and you can see it's not super foamy. All I did was warm it up. Oh. My machine is uh, cleansing itself a little bit. It's freaking out. I'm going to shut it off. It still wants to do more steam. But let me show you a little something about pouring milk into your beverages. You want to bring your espresso over. Don't spill it, but bring it close to the rim, and that's how you pour your milk in. So you're not busting it up a lot. This is also what they do. Although I don't do art. You don't put art in your cortados. That's weird. And eventually what you would do is you would bring it up. And then you would start pouring from further up. But we don't need to do that. But that is the proper way so that you uh, pour down into it. And there you go. And as you can see, that's your 50-50 blend of your milk to uh, espresso. 
All right, let me check back here. Lisa, let's see. We're asking, let's see. Oh, and Cool Kid said it's around 11 p.m., so they'll be asleep because they have to get up at 3 a.m. for work. Yeah, that's in Texas. Uh, oh, and Jen said they made taco meat, chili, bacon, uh, the PM PSMF bread, cucumber salad, keto chows. Oh, crud. I forgot to make some more keto chows for the creamy. Well, there's one in the freezer for Attila tomorrow, and I've got half of one in the freezer. I think there's another half of one, too. So everybody in the house should be fine in the morning. I just have to make sure I make some tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Oh, bacon mayonnaise, a keto brick pucks, and burgers for dinner. We did some burgers as well. Uh, but I actually cooked them yesterday. Just I was too lazy to even make smash burgers, so I just threw hamburgers on the Blackstone and cooked them. So there's nothing special about them, but they were still really good. So well, I shouldn't say there was nothing special about them because I cooked the bacon first, and then I cooked the burgers in the bacon grease, so they've got that nice bacony flavor built right into them. Oh hey, exchange student has joined us. Good to see. Uh, and Jen is asking if I carry the espresso machine up and downstairs every week. And the answer is not every week, but sometimes. It's actually super lightweight. Uh, nothing, uh, it's not a great, it's not the greatest espresso machine. Uh, one day we would like to buy the Breville, but the Breville is uh, outrageously cost prohibitive. So we have lesser espresso machine and good enough for the likes of me. So... I'm going to take a drink of my Cortado. It's very milky. It's good, but for someone who drinks black coffee, it's very creamy and milky. <laughs> uh, we'll have to cut that back, so let me see. Oh, and Sky says it does look creamy. Yes. And I bet that you would like it if we added sweetener. Um, I find like a couple drops of a liquid sweetener is pretty good, especially after you've been keto for a while, you kind of get used to not having the excessively sweet. And of course, you for, you, if you learn how to brew well, it takes away a lot of the bitter and sour stuff that happens. Oh, Sharon said they've added the uh, stuffler to their wish list. Yeah, uh. I actually had ordered one of those, the, the larger stufflers, and then I canceled it because I saw how big they were. Uh, and I was like, I don't want to be making giant uh, stufflers. And I did some search, and I found a brand called My Mini that makes the uh, small size and still has the little grippers to lift your stuffed waffle out. So that's what I'm waiting for to show up. Let's make this chaffle. I'm still going to use what I'm calling the Christy Davis chaffle recipe and then with my edit additives and uh, changes to it. I found that the gelatin chaffle has, so, has uh, become easily and quickly my favorite. It's put me on like a little chaffle bender, uh, which is not terrible. But I've got my tablespoon of butter that I melted in the microwave. What I did was I ground up my Swiss cheese. Uh, because it's Reuben inspired. Uh, I use, so Swiss cheese instead of mozzarella. You could use mozzarella if you want to. You just find that it's very neutral in flavor and I wanted Swiss cheese flavor. So I ground it up just like I did with mozzarella. And we'll put that in. And it's, uh, it's more than the one tablespoon that I used for the smaller truffle. But I need more binder because I'm adding... Uh, sauerkraut and uh, meat in there and I'm going to go ahead and add my gelatin first before I put the egg the gelatin is one teaspoon this is a half teaspoon uh, I think my teaspoon shoot I don't know we have like four of them and I couldn't find even one of them which is why we have four because they get they disappear so one teaspoon of unflavored beef gelatin. So that takes care of our gelatin. Off to the side here. Um, 
baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder. So, and for the baking powder, just like a quarter teaspoon, you don't need a lot of baking powder, just a little bit. It adds a softness to the chaffle. Uh, so that is my preference for, I, I put baking powder in all my chaffles, uh, whether original recipes call for them or not. Let's see. Oh, Jen said they had half a shake. They lost half a shake today because they didn't hold the lid when they shook it. Oh, I hate when that has happened to me. I'm usually pretty good. I try to remember to snap the lids closed before I screw them on. I asked one egg. And then let me see here. An exchange student, too, said they hate coffee, but they had Thursday and Friday at work, and they don't know what was up, but they didn't hate it. So, oh, work got a Keurig. You know, well, Keurig brews are very light by comparison to, some say, like this, the home uh, espresso. Hmm. And the last thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to mix this original batter. A little bit before I add in so I'll repeat that was my uh, two tablespoons of uh, ground up Swiss cheese one teaspoon of unflavored beef gelatin and one egg and one quarter teaspoon of baking powder the next thing I'm gonna add is a tablespoon and a half of beef based keto chow uh the original truffle is one tablespoon but because i'm adding so many other things in here i want to do a tablespoon and a half uh, again uh, along with the increase of the cheese i want to make sure that's too much i want to make sure that i have a, a little extra binder for the truffle i chose the beef base because I thought since it was corned beef and cabbage that the beef base would be a better blend. But you could use savory chicken. I think that I would not use, you could also use the tomato basil. But I would not recommend using the spicy taco because it has flavors that I think might not be as complimentary with the sauerkraut. Now, if you just wanted a plain chaffle, and I actually think that when you are making the stuffed ones, you could actually stop right here with the batter and put half of this down and then put the filling inside. But I like an all-in-one kind of uh, meal. Let me just take a look here at our chats. Oh, Sky says, yes, they've never been a sweet person, a sweet uh, tasting person, which is good, but some things just need a touch. Uh, oh, and uh, let's see, Jen is saying that they don't even cut, they aren't even cutting it. They just put it in a glass bowl, measuring cup, nuke 60 seconds, stir, go another 20 seconds, and then repeat if needed. Let's see. And Sky says they have two coconut, uh, and so they're going to give it a try. Oh, and Lisa says that they, uh, they're they interested in the smaller version of the Stuffler, so I'll have to share the link. Yeah, uh, I want to get it first and then test it out. We can do a video and test it out, and then as long as it's not terrible, then we can share it all out so we can get the smaller sizes. And Sky's laughing because there's a, now there's a, two coffee haters in the coffee talk room. There are actually a lot of non-coffee drinkers, but that's okay because we're nerding it up and we make food and yeah, we're all, it's all good. Hey, Tim. See, I sent you a reminder and you were still late. What's up with that? So anyways, let's see. Oh, an exchange student too says they like the waffle recipe from Bluegrass Girl. Uh, they made this morning, it was a guava grapefruit oh and this morning they made guava grapefruit eggnog and gingerbread 
Oh, Tim said he made chicken from frozen in the foodie. I didn't know that the foodie could cook from frozen like the Instapot. Oh, back to my recipe. What I've got now is I've got a tablespoon and a half, almost two tablespoons of my caraway sauerkraut. I made that from scratch, so if you were around for the fermenting videos, you saw how we made that. And then I've got some corned beef that I've cut up into teeny tiny bits that you cannot see on the camera. And I'm just going to mix that right into the batter. I don't know why people don't like to mix stuff into the batter and they try to layer it in. I prefer to just go ahead and mix it all up front. Easy peasy, no muss, no fuss. Now I will tell you, you should always let your batter sit for a few minutes like I did now while we were chatting. That lets the gelatin and the baking powder and the egg all come together and get that scoopable texture. Otherwise, it, uh, and it just sort of lets it all sort of meld together a little bit more. And you can see now, instead of uh, being uh, lumpy or soupy, it's back to that scoop texture. Lisa says uh, she's going to try the chaffle this chaffle recipe with the stuffed waffler maker. When they use a different recipe, it was not good. Yeah, uh, I will say the gelatin makes, uh, they're crispy, but they're also quite uh, tender. Let me go ahead and scoop it. I've got, I brought two dashes down, the honeycomb and the regular. So let's see what happens. Put it down and you do spread them out more than I do with some others. And I don't really have any good rhyme or reason because it should spread out in the waffle maker, but I see everybody else spreads it. So I figure maybe there are good reasons for that. I will also tell you that the honeycomb can use a little more batter than the standard mini dash. Stick it on there. That may not be enough batter though. Let me just grab a little bit more. And even with everything that I added, it still looks like it's going to be about three chaffles. There we go. We'll set that aside. And that's it. Now we wait like six minutes. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Reichwin says that uh, Sirius Keto has a chaffle recipe with the stuff, stuffler recipe. Uh, actually, I watched that Sirius Keto recipe, and it looked so good because he used, like, pork panko down for the base before he put the chaffle batter on it, and then he topped it with the cheese and then more batter. And I think that sounds very crispy. But also sounds like a lot. Uh, Chow CEO has joined us. Good evening. And asking me to repeat the chaffle recipe again. Sure thing. So I have a tablespoon of butter that I uh, gently melted into the dish. Uh, just in the microwave. Smells good cooking. And then. Um, so the tablespoon of butter. Then I added about three tablespoons of ground up Swiss cheese. Then I added in my, uh, a teaspoon of unflavored beef gelatin, one egg, a tablespoon and a half of keto chow, and then a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of my caraway sauerkraut, and about the same amount of really thin sliced chopped up uh, corned beef so i did not add any other salt or pepper or anything like that because the sauerkraut and the corned beef plus the unflat plus the beef beef based keto chow all are very uh, salty so it will have plenty Um, 
the truffles are steaming like crazy, which is probably because the sauerkraut is going to let off a lot of liquid. It's entirely possible that these won't work. Like I said, it was untested. I got all the ingredients today and I thought about it, but I had a crick in my neck, which made me lazy. And I just said it was time to just go try it because the worst thing that happens is that uh, we unplug the chaffle makers and I scoop out what I can and still enjoy its tastiness. And then later I have to scrub my waffle makers. I'd rather have mistakes that show that they happen to everyone when you're trying stuff than be perfect all the time because I think that it's a... I don't know. I just think that it may, it's, it's a better... It's better because when you're trying new things at home and you fail but you've never seen anybody else making mistakes or going awry on the internet... It's kind of a little bit uh, demoralizing to me. So I prefer to just go all out and be crazy. It's still steaming, steaming, but I'm going to lift it up. Oh, no, they look fantastic. I'm going to close it back down to finish cooking, though. No. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and uh, Reichwin is uh, sharing about that whole... Uh, uh, pork rind panko down at the bottom and how crunchy it was when uh, Sirius Keto took a bite out of that uh, chaffle. It, it was fantastic sounding. Exchange student too said they had a teriyaki meat stick today and then afterwards when they looked they noted it was 8 grams of carbs. Yeah, teriyaki is so much sugar. Uh, I've been... I think I have a teriyaki recipe using some artificial sweetener. Uh, I'll see if I can track it down for you. And Cool Kid Keto says, No chaffles or waffles until KetoCon since they decided to commit to doing BBBE till KetoCon. Uh, but they do like crispy chaffles. You know, speaking of BBBE, I've seen some people struggling with those egg yolk muffins. Have you guys tried those? I've never made them before, and I'm very curious about them. Uh, I'm curious as to one thing that I've noticed in some recipes, it's egg yolks and baking powder, and other recipes, it's egg yolks and baking soda. So I am very curious as to which way that's supposed to go. But it's a lot of egg yolks, which I find, you know, that's the expensive part. So I'm very curious as to how they would go. I see someone, oh, uh, Greybeard Overland. Uh, new, it's a name I haven't seen on the channel before, so uh, welcome. Glad to see you guys. Um, let's see. And then, uh, oh, and then talking about when uh, on Serious Keto's uh, chaffle recipe, he did one where he tried to do... Uh, the provolone on the bottom and it made a huge mess. I bet it tasted fantastic, but you know what? I've seen that and I noticed that a lot of people do like to put down uh, sprinkles of cheese first and I've tried that and it just makes a mess. It is tasty and delicious, but it does make a mess. Um, sometimes it's worth it and other times I find uh, I prefer not. I'm just moving this so I can see the two separate steams so I can know when to take it out. Because uh, the back mini, uh, the regular waffle is uh, steaming lots more than the honeycomb version. I love the honeycomb one. It's my favorite. I know I've said it before on the channel, but I think that actually uh, I'd even be willing to pick up a second honeycomb to stop using the regular one. But we'll see once the uh, stuffed mini one comes in because I'm just saying stuffed waffles are a game changer. Especially for me if the stuffed waffle will fit in my pocket. Because that suddenly means uh, stuffed pizza chaffles can go on bike rides. Okay. It's a little bit soft for on the sauerkraut. Actually, it's quite nice. 
it's very hot i'm burning my fingers so i'm gonna set it on the plate for a second <laughs> i think it's about four inches maybe not that Oh, and Sky says you can reduce the circumference of the circle to uh, round edges of the cheese. And just Renee says, who's going to who's gonna be getting the stuffler? I think like everything else, once they find these gadgets, we'll all buy them because they're awesome. So, and just Renee is asking, wait, do they have a mini stuffed one? It's not name brand. It's called the My Mini uh, Stuffed Waffle Maker. That's what I found. So that's what I will be getting. But, you know... Who knows when it's not the the brand how it's gonna be. Uh let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this third one on. Cheese fizzle. All right. And there we go, off into the dirty dishes. So, but yeah, so the My Mini is the, is the smaller version of the Stuffler. And I am, uh, like I said, I just knew that I was not going to be, I, I'm better off with the mini version. Mm. A crispy Swiss cheese crumble was off on the side that I just ate. It was delightful. Mm. yes excellent i am thrilled to pieces it's a winner 100 percent can recommend and uh renee is asking for the link to the smaller one i will i will post it out after the video because i don't know that i can find it easily while I've got all of these windows open on my laptop but yes it is the uh but yes then I can share it out and my mini is the brand oh let me get this one out Hot. all right so let me unplug this one so it can cool down and we'll just set it off to the side. So there we go. They look great. They taste fantastic. The sauerkraut and the corned beef come through. Very salty. And it was cr it's crunchy on the on the outside and uh, soft on and on the inside, which is my preference for chapels. And uh, Lisa says they found the uh, small off-brand at Walmart for $30. Yes, that's the uh, Tower XL brand, uh, Waffleizer Plus. Uh, is it smaller? I couldn't tell. I just thought that it was, a, I also thought it was the large size, but just did not have those little grippy sides. And I was big on the grippy sides. And Exchange Student 2 says that uh, this, that sounds good and uh yeah so so many varieties of chaffles sky says uh it's on amazon for 39 dollars yes and if you uh keep an eye out you can often get discounts on stuff like that so uh you have to kind of maybe hunt around or maybe wait a little bit because we got ours for uh uh 15 percent off which made it which is what really was the sale on it because 40 dollars is too much Mm. Oh, Lisa says it is five inches, the Power XL version. So they're guessing it's small. Yeah, it is because this is my small plate. And I saw when they were making the, the ones in the Stuffler Stuffler, man, they were like gigantic. And I was like, there's no way I could eat something that big. I mean, I could, but I probably wouldn't feel very good afterwards. Maybe on a day like today, I don't know what was up with me, but I was like an eating machine. I was just like starving all day. And I'm uh, blaming it on uh, the crick in my neck because I was also hurting a lot. Which, of course, now that it's... Uh, 
getting close to bedtime, it's not so bad. And does my chaffle need sauce? Uh, I don't think so, but we've made the a ketified version of the Russian dressing before. And so you could make some of that. It would be, I think it would taste good with cream cheese. And actually, I also think it would taste really good with some mustard and a tomato slice. But that's just a, me being weird. But I do think mustard would be good. I've, I don't know. I like just plain chaffles a lot. Probably because I really love cheese. Oh, and Cool Kid Keto says they broke down and ordered a Ninja Creamy. Uh, we love our Ninja Creamy. But I can say that I don't know if I wasn't just as happy with the soft serve that I was getting out of my compressor machine. However, other people love the Ninja, Cre the Ninja Creamy in this house. Everybody loves it. And whereas I was the only one who would eat the sorbets and stuff out of the compressor machine. So we'll see. Oh, Sky says they need a reindeer shaped stuffed chaffle in their life, right? The mini has one. Oh, I don't, is it a stuffed, is it a stuffed waffle maker, the reindeer one, or is it their regular waffle size? Mm. That's a, uh, I'll have to look that up. We'll share it out in the Two Crazy Ketos group since almost all of us are in there. And if you're not in the Two Crazy Ketos group, that's a, it's a large group. So there's a lot of uh, sharing going on in there. Sky says cheese is their love language. Hilarious. Yes, me too. That's why I have cheese Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and Sky didn't like the creamy. I don't, I still don't know what was, I don't know. Something seems weird because your, your creamy stuff did not seem like it was coming out like ours does. So I don't know. Although we do have a tolerance for some iciness. Who knows? But yeah, so I mean, not every device is uh, for every person. That's why you have people who try them out and try different things. It's okay about, you know how to be quiet about it. It's good when people hear that there are people who don't love it. I will tell you that if this one breaks very soon, I will be done with the Ninja Creamy because it will be the second one that, to break on us. But it seems to be holding strong now, so we're uh, hopeful. Oh, this guy says, heart, reindeer, Santa, snowflake, snowman, and turkey are all listed. Ooh, turkeys. Oh, and Jen, sa Jen says that uh, she loves the creamy, but their husband sleeps during the day, so she can rarely use it when she wants to for lunch. Oh, yeah, because it is loud. Oh, and uh, Sky says, even after five spins, it was still powdery. You know, if it was still powdery after five spins, I would say you need two full cycles and then to pour like two tablespoons of uh, almond milk in there and then do the mix in. That probably would have fixed it. That's uh, that's usually how ours gets creamy. Oh, and Sharon says the stuffler makes a waffle approximately five and one eighth inch by one and three quarters. Wow, I don't know. It just looks well. You know, that would be about right because that's, you know, my hand is like six inches and look, it's, you know, the size of my head. It looked really big. I'm looking for something more like this size. You know, not, not my whole hand, but just a piece, just a part of it, you know. So I think that's what it would be. That's why I wanted the mini. I think that it just, it just looked really big and I could see myself developing a, uh, problems eating it because I would want to eat the whole thing while it was fresh. Oh, and Strong says that they are scared their creamy is not going to last too long. They make one to two a day and worry that the blade is going to fly out like a throwing star. No, uh, if it gives out at all, and it may not, 
what's going to happen is that a the bearing will wear and you'll know that it's going because it'll uh, it'll start leaving little bits of uh, uh, grease and black on the top of the lid and once it does that or a uh, little black powder here and there and once it does that you have to call ninja make sure that you read have registered your warranty because they will replace it uh, sometimes it's the bearing in the lid and you just need a replacement lid so they'll go through all of that with you. Their customer service has always been really good, but I don't want a machine that I'm gonna have that was expensive and then I have to replace it every few months. It's just not, uh, that's not quality to me. So it really has to, this replacement that we got really has to hold out for us for me to justify getting another, so. And Lisa says uh, they used to hide in the other room while the creamy would spin. I was worried that the blade would spin off. Oh, so, yeah. I guess, I don't know. I don't worry about any of that stuff anymore. I'm like, no, if I get hurt, I guess I get hurt and then I get money. <laughs> I've got a kid who's moving out and who's still in college. So, you know, <laughs> it gives you a different frame of mind. <laughs> so... Oh, and Stwong says they hadn't filled out the warranty. Yeah, make sure you do that. So, all right. So uh, let me give you like the nerd facts before we sign off for the evening. So the Cortado, I mentioned to you that it's a 50-50 dilution of the coffee and espresso. Uh, and that's actually what uh, Cortado means to cut. So you're cutting the espresso with the milk. Oh, yeah, so Attila's giving me bad news about the creamy machine that I just don't want to hear it, so I'm going to pretend I didn't read that. Yep, and uh, Sky, sa Sky is saying it's very fussy, so uh, the compressor ice cream maker works for, for him, so yep, that's good, yeah. And that is what I have said. I said, once this one goes, I'm not even going to bother. And I'm just going back to the compressor machine. You make your shake, you pour it in there, and boom, ice cream. You know. All right. So anyways, like all of these coffee beverages, because they are tasty and delicious, everybody wants to claim that they invented them. So there's controversy. Uh, a lot of people want to say it came from Italy, but uh, more, more document exists saying that it was created in Basque, Spain, uh, somewhere in the, uh, in the 1930-ish, 30s, eh, hard to say, but Spain, uh, spreading to northern Portugal and into Cuba, uh, a lot of places in Cuba lay stake to the claim and say they invented it. So it's a toss up. Who knows where it was actually invented, but we do know it's delicious. The Cortado did not appear in the United States until the 1960s. Uh, because there are periods of time where milk was not as easy to get as it is today. And hey, we are entering times where getting milk is not always the easiest. Uh, sometimes, um, shoot the word, oh, condensed milk. Boy, I lost it there for the minute. The word just went away. Uh, condensed milk is used. However, if you're using condensed milk, it's no longer a cortado, it's a condensada. So you have to remember that. So the Cortada is a really strong beverage. Let's see, I see some more chat. Oh, uh, Lisa says to Swang that the warranty is really easy to fill out. So that's good to know uh, for them. And of course, Sky says, and of course you need, that leaves more room in the freezer for more meat. So, oh, and Raikwin agrees. So let me see. Oh, the con the condensata. So it's very strong, 
It's often served, if you order it someplace, they almost always serve it with water to sip in between because it is a very strong and sturdy drink. And so we made espresso and then we gave it steamed milk. So you might be wondering, well, isn't that a latte? Um, what about a cup cappuccino or what about a macchiato? And the answer is no, they're all very similar. But the differences between all of these beverages are the amounts of milk, whether they're just steamed, whether they're foamed, whether they're, uh, whether the espresso is poured on top, on bottom, whether it's mixed, uh, and all kinds of stuff. So what we'll do is we'll start going through these uh, espresso beverages uh, periodically on the live streams so that we can learn about the differences between them as we go. And then I get more espresso drinks. That's my plan. Uh, I will tell you at the very least though, like the biggest difference between the Cortado and the Latte is 100% that ratio. Whereas the Cortado is 50-50, Lattes uh, are more like 80% milk to espresso. So it's a much smaller amount of espresso and a much larger amount of steamed milk. So I uh, know that. Uh, and in the United States, in a lot of places, you won't see Cortado on the menu, but you'll see a drink called Gibraltar. It's the same thing. Oh, I let this go. So this one's, uh, very crispy, but it did not burn, except for it is burning my fingers. So you can hear it though. Very crunchy. Um. The reason it is called a Gibraltar is because in the United States, I'm sure that many of you have heard of this glass brand name called Libby. Libby is a huge glass manufacturer in the United States. They produce a lot of things and one of the glasses they uh, manufacture that is used in a ton of coffee shops is the Gibraltar glass. It's a perfect espresso cup or espresso glass. It's beautiful for the Cortado. And so in the United States, the uh, Blue Bottle Coffee Company out of San Francisco was making these Cortados in the Gibraltar glass. And so they started calling it the Gibraltar and it kind of took off and there you go. So, oh, and Sky says the uh, condensada is a, is a go-to in their house. The husband is Cuban and you get the coffee high just from being around all of the Bustelo. See? Not a surprise. Oh, and this guy's asking why I like the honeycomb better. Um, well, it's, it's a little bit more real estate, but I just, I feel like the edges are a little crispier and I like the pockets. The pockets hold the uh, the nut butters on my bike rides better than the little squares. Uh, the uh, Perfect Keto Super Fats are much thinner than uh, peanut butter from a jar or, uh, or regular almond butter because it's got MCT or coconut oils mixed into it. So the little deeper pockets and the slightly sturdier texture that comes from the honeycomb is why. Uh, they're all very tasty. Uh, it does not make a difference in the taste. For me, it's all it's the shape and the and the slightly crunchier, harder texture from the honeycomb. That just it makes it honestly it's sturdier for my pockets. So, uh, oh, was I saying? Oh yeah. So. A little, a few differences. I already told you that when we're substituting heavy cream for milk in these kind of beverages, you um, mix your heavy cream with water 50% to give it the right weight and texture. But you do want to keep to the heavy cream because that does have our fat content that's really good for a ketogenic uh, uh, food plan. And it's uh, still, while all cream has carbs, it's less carbs than using a milk and it tastes better and has better texture even when it's 50 50 than say switching to an unsweetened almond milk um 
You might say, well, why not just use half and half? And that is because half and half is not the same. Um, heavy cream is 36% uh, milk fat. Heavy whipping cream is not less than 36%. So, but can be more. So that's the difference between your heavy cream and your heavy whipping cream. But when you get into half and half, half and half is not less than 18%, but more than 10%. So already you're getting a large disparity there in your actual dairy product. Uh, an option that's sort of in between those two is um, very similar is the light cream. Uh, it's no less than 18% but it is less than 30 percent so uh it's a a slightly larger variance than the half and half but a slightly different product uh, if you order beverages with light cream that's what breve is supposed to be i will tell you that american coffee shops don't understand what breve means and they use half and half and it's not good so you do need to be very specific um, when you are uh, asking for brevet in your beverages, make sure that they know. Oh, and Jen says they like the new backdrop. Thanks. It's uh, going to be the regular backdrop all the time now because it's not green screen. And I'm not going to change to green screen and not green screen because I got frustrated with like my eggs looking like mold and my cheese not looking right. And I figured we can deal with other lighting issues like looking watched, washed out or stuff like that as long as our ingredients were looking normal. And you can see like the lovely chaffle. So. Uh, let me see what we've got here. Uh, I lost track here so it's going to catch out. So, okay, that was about that. Uh, Lisa says they've never seen light cream in the store in Austin. You don't find light cream very often anymore. So, and that's a real shame because it's actually a pretty great product. And uh, Reichland says the shapes are actually just impressions made on the top of a standard waffle. True, but when we come to these, the shape is actually on the top and the bottom. So that's kind of nice too. And of course, if you've got a right rise in it, uh, then you're correct. The shape does not carry through all the way. So it's okay. I'm real happy with these, by the way. Oh, and oh, thanks, Sky. Sky says the red tablecloth makes everything pop nicely. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. I like the purple too. Uh, so, and but that's in the laundry. So red it is. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you about that. Uh, oh, uh, if the heavy cream is whipped into whipped cream, as opposed to heavy whipping cream, it's already all whipped up and you order, uh, that's what you will get is a dollop of whipped cream on your coffee if you order it con pana. So that's the uh, different things. So, oh, and Sky says there's even a difference between heavy whipped cream and manufacturer's cream. Uh, correct. And, and, but a lot of that is because variances are allowed in the products themselves, which is why it's a pain in the backside. But you have to learn those percentages, like what, you know, like heavy cream is 36% milk fat. End of story. But heavy whipping cream is not less than 36% and can be a little more. So those are all those fun things. And that's what I have for tonight. So if there are no, que no more questions, we'll wrap it up for this evening. Some of our chatty people are also out on the cruise. And yes, there will be a Cheese Friday. There will, there's always a Cheese Friday. Um, uh, and let's see. And what are we cooking next week? I don't know yet. Well, well, I'm winging it. 
Uh, we are making the dirty chai, the dirty matcha. I was going to say dirty chai, but we're not doing dirty chais. We're doing dirty matchas. Uh, so coffee and green tea powder. Oh, hey, Janet. Good to see you. Uh, and I'm sorry that you're just arriving, but you can get catch the replay. Oh, and Reichwin said they just bought a Belgian waffle maker. Ooh. And Lisa's asking if I drained the sauerkraut. I did, but I didn't rinse it. I left all the salty brineness on it. Well, I mean, yep, so, yes. So Friday, we'll have another cheese Friday. And uh, Monday, because it actually came in, wow, two months in a row, I've got the keto crate breakdown for you. So uh, we'll wing it from there. I'm open to suggestions and ideas. I was uh, hoping to be outside tonight, but then the weather said there might be rain. And of course, it's absolutely not rainy. It's gorgeous. So we could have been outside making bacon and eggs on the Blackstone. But next time, right? So, all right, everyone. You have a good night, and I will talk to you later in the week. I believe tomorrow is Keto on the Couch with Two Crazy Keto, so I look forward to that, and I think I actually don't have a meeting. And Jen, is 7.30 too early to go to sleep? No, but you might wake up really early. So, all right. Good night, everyone. You have a good night. Bye-bye.